Hello everyone, and welcome back to Discworld 2. Missing, presumed. We are in the mortician's uh, office, and we have just been declared dead, so we can continue to the land of sheep, sun, no, sheep, sun, sand, and hats with corks in, where death, death is hiding. And death got kind of exploded when Rinswind uh, kind of really screwed up something. But to be able to travel, we need to be dead, and we need to talk to the dead collector and show him our death certificate so we can be transported there. Right! Well, hop on, sir. We'll soon have you off to a post-mortem holiday. Did I tell you the one about the carrion luggage? Afraid so. Yeah. Ah, well. Can't win them all. Or any of them, come to think of it. Ow! Was that really necessary? Ugh. That sounded really stupid. Har, har, yo, ho, ho, me matey. Shiver your timber, a vast improvement. Stop that. Oh, please. It's genuine nautical gibberish. No, I've told you about that. I'm only doing business with you if you stop all that ridiculous yo, ho, ho business. It's demeaning. But it's establishing character. No, it's establishing that you are a loony. This is supposed to be a sea voyage, not Captain Sea Dog's little shipmate's holiday fun club. Look, if we're going to sea, then we ought to establish ourselves as acceptable stereotypes of sea-going characters. It all stands to reason. Now, you can't hold me responsible for the paradigms which grip our customers. They expect this sort of thing. They don't think you're real. Without all that avast the main brace ah, business, word of mouth advertising can make or break a business like mine. Word of mouth? They're dead. Oh. Oh, all right. Just bring them <laughs> on board then, and we'll forget all about it. Very simple. Timbers shiver, hoist, hoist, locker, And off we go, all of us. What? Uh, nothing. Just, um, clearing my throat. There's something very odd about you. Who cares? And off we go. Um... As I were walking down Paradise Street, singing hey ho, a blow the man down. A saucy young cuttlefish I chanced there to meet. Oh, give me some time to blow the sheep up. Damn! I say, any chance of a cup of tea, my nautical arty? <laughs> That's the ghost of Captain Lavender Beard, back from Davy Jones's bathroom. Run for your lives, women and fearless sea dogs first. Well, that's... Ugh. You know, I seem to meet more crazy people than sheer coincidence should allow. Anyway, looks like I'm in control now. Well, it seems like it, yes. And here we go. Um, holy hell, Rincewind. Oh, Monty Python too. Um, what's going on? Okay. Rincewind, what are you doing? Are we in 4x now? Bone Die Beach. I guess we are. There he is. You! There you are! Bone Idol, I see. Come on, get up and get back to work. It's chaos back there. No. I like it here. It's a land of opportunity. Sun, surf, and prawns. I can see the sun's giving you a nice bleach. Come on, we're going home. No. I'm not going back. I worked my fingers to the bone for them, but they all hate me. Hate you? 
What does that matter? You're death. You're not supposed to worry about things. You just... just happen. Well, I want more from life. A little bit of popularity. It's not too much to ask, is it? Well, he is I popular due to everybody. this world. Does anyone ever say thank you? I think not. Thank you for dying? Uh, look, if I promise you that I'll find a way of making you popular, will you come back? People will like me. You promise? Cross my heart and hope to meet you in your professional capacity. Now, is it a deal? Hmm... All right. But only if you make me feel wanted. I have just the thing to bring the message into the people's hearts and minds, my dear fellow. Tell me, have you ever heard of something called... The clickies? <laughs> a clicky, you say? Something to make a legendary figure more personally popular? That's a challenge and a half, that is. But nothing modern marketing techniques can't handle. You just leave it to old Dibbler. All right, but I wanted to have integrity. Just make it nice. Nice? Of course it'll be nice. I'll tell you what, I'll splice you in for half a take, but mind, I'm cutting my own throat. Now, tell me what talent you got lined up. This uh, lead of yours. Nice um, upper balcony, is she? Um, no. Oh, well, what, a skinny one then, eh? Long and lean, eh? Whoa. Well, quite lean, yes. I got it then. I've got the angle. Works as a shipwright by day over at the docks. Sweat, 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 wood shavings, and torn, tight little shirt, and then dances in an exotic nightclub every evening. We clap a soundtrack on it, and we got a hit for sure. A shipwright who dances in a topless bar? What the hell do you take our audiences for? <laughs> for about three groat a ticket. Why? What's wrong? The formula's perfect. I'm just not so sure my principal lead is going to make a very convincing exotic dancer. I mean, sex-wise and all. You mean they're a man? Well, I suppose he's a man. It's hard to tell, really. You have to look at the pelvis, don't you? They keep you wizards indoors too long. That's your problem, mate. Look, I'll tell you what, we can sell anything, just as long as we have the right marketing. You know the product, so I'll leave all that with you. We need three things to make this a success. You've been waiting for this bit, haven't you? Just waiting for it. Oh, First sure. and foremost, a gorgeous babe. That's just a pro forma for the press. Next, you need a really catchy jingle, a song we can clap into the soundtrack. Finally, we need a gimmick, the novelty merchandise that actually creams the cake. Get me those three things, and I'll have a film out in no time. Collect a babe, a jingle, and some novelties. I don't suppose you'd consider collecting them yourself. Nah, mate. What sort of fool would waste his valuable leisure time voluntarily going off on annoying little quests set by stupid and ungrateful people, eh? Yeah, that's <laughs> us. Yes, he'd have to be some sort of idiot, wouldn't he? Oh, well, see you in a little while, then. <laughs> Take axe, open door, kill dragon. Why wasn't <laughs> I born in the days of text adventures? Holy wood. That's it. We're going to make death popular. <laughs> Death, old chap. We are gonna make you a star. So, we have been in Hollywood, but we're going to Jelly Baby. The hill, the oasis... yes. Let's start out in Jelly Baby. In the kind of Egypt area. What have we here? We have the camels here. Oh, yeah, really camels. What the heck? Who are you, S the salesman? Oh boy. <laughs> a very suspect salesman. Let's have a word with him. Hello. Gerbils, always one. Prime racing gerbils rented to you at lowest cost. Gerbils? gerbils? Those look like camels. No, 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 Offendi. These are gerbils, desert-dwelling rodents. Very fine, very cheap. Look, I'm telling you that these are not gerbils. Do these gerbils of yours eat cheese? Run about in little wheels? Make nests out of old tissues and cotton wool? No, Offendi. So what makes you think that these creatures are gerbils? They burrow. Really? All of them? Yes. Well, no. Uh, uh, not all of them. Well, none. 
really. Right. Well, I might be interested in renting one of the non-burrowing ones, then. Indeed, indeed. Please, feel free to browse. So, um, <clears throat> as far as I remember, camels in the Discworld are extremely intelligent, but also extremely evil. Let's see now. Let us for now establish that these are camels. This being so, how much to rent one for a brief journey? Five dinar of Andy. Mm. And to buy? Five dinar of Andy. Why are they the same to rent as to buy? I cannot stand the noise they make as they sit in their wood shavings eating cheese. Now look, I thought we had several. <laughs> oh, all right. Five dinar then. But only if you invest some of it in professional psychiatric treatment. Psychiatricist? What, what? 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 Oh. Okay. Yeah, I have a camel over there. Seriously confused now. I just wanted to have a look at their little. The shuddersome thought, of course, is that these creatures actually breed, meaning that something actually finds them attractive. I was hoping I could read the little sign on them. If I must have one of these, then perhaps I should talk to the salesman. Alright, uh, as I said, I was just hoping I could read the sign, but it doesn't seem like it, so... Never mind, I have a camel. I'm fine with that. Lo, behold the majesty of this tall stone pointy thing. Who knows its mystic secrets? Who cares? Not me, for one. Hmm. <laughs> no, not for now, at least. But we're going to use our camel, and we're going to travel around in the desert. My desert steed! A fine and mighty racing gerbil. Sounds good to me. Let's use our racing gerbil. And we're going to... Was it the oasis, or was it the... The hill? I think it was the hill. Oh! Look at that! Skeleton? Hmm! A skeleton on a stick. I think there might be marketing possibilities here. Yeah. And Bone Idol. Bone Idol? I'm not quite sure that I really appreciate that joke. <laughs> Say no more. Hello, Mr. Idol. Hey! What on disc are you lot doing up there? Nothing much. Just hanging around. Nice one. So, why... Why were you tied up? Well, it's got tons of advantages. Such as a bit of sunshine, a bit of conversation, bird watching of your buzzers and vultures. Then they get frightened when people pass by. No, they carry on regardless. Carry <laughs> on. Good one, eh? <laughs> not really, but still. If it's not an embarrassing question, why did they tie you up there? Publicity. Publicity? They've got you up there tied to an old dead tree. Well, it was either this or do adverts for coffee. In which case, I suppose, I can see your point. Kind of, yeah. Music. Say, have you ever considered using your talents commercially? Oh, yes. I mean, I could rent myself out for scaring crows off the crops. Lighten up children's parties, that sort of thing. No, no, no. I mean, you're singing. Would you consider doing some singing for me? What? Oh, well, I, I suppose it could be done. Tell you what, price us down from here, and we'll see what we can do for you. Ah, seems like we're about to fix the first part of our things, our deal with Dibbler. Ah, oh, the Middle Ages. Picturesque, isn't it? Yeah, sure. See you later. Not unless they see you first, Rincewind. Well, we have the knife, so we should be able to get them down. Little music group from the beginning of the game. That's death. And all that music. Are you picking up every single one of them? You're putting them in your pocket. Yeah, you did. You have a marching band in your pocket. For telling Dibbler, you found the band. Yay! We got a band. <laughs> that was so weird. So freaking weird. Let's go to the pyramid. Pyramids. Oh. Oh. Dams in the stream of time. Correctly shaped and oriented, with proper paracosmic measurements correctly plumbed in, the temporal potential of the great mass of stone can be diverted to accelerate or reverse time over a very small area, in the same way that a hydraulic ram can be induced to pump water against the flow. 
The whole point of a correctly built pyramid is to achieve absolute null time in the central chamber so that a dying king tucked up there will indeed live forever, or at least never die. The time that should have passed in the chamber is stored in the bulk of the pyramid and allowed to flare off once every 24 hours. All right, good to know, good to know. And in we go. Hey, there's a the mummy. Mysterious hieroglyphics. They say that if you stare at these things long enough, they begin to sprout talk balloons. Oh, interesting. So hieroglyph. We have a pot. Ooh, pot of glue. I do so love sticky stuff. Oh, I take that. You never know when you need some sticky stuff. Well, there's, there's all sorts of obvious things which could be said at this point. Let us maintain our dignity and simply say that this is the preserved and embalmed body of a dead person. And treat the situation with decorum and respect for the deceased. You're waiting <laughs> yeah, for right. me to say some sort of crash punchline, aren't you? Well, you're not getting it from Mrs. Rincewind's little boy. If, in fact, she was Mrs. Rincewind, I mean. Can we pick him up? I can't talk to him and I'm not picking him up. So, you better think of something else, I guess. Well, I want the... Uh... Bandage. Oh, I'd only get tangled up if I tried to unfurl that. Nah, don't you worry, Rincewind. We're going to do something good about that. We're going to take some. <laughs> you don't have to get tangled at all. There you go. We'll just put it in here, and we already have an arm, so let's That's use it. nice. One bandaged wooden arm. Yeah. Uh, not really sure why, but we have one. I think that's all we need to do. Yeah. Let's leave. We need that. Now, let's go to the oasis. Ah, now I know. This skeleton. skeleton belongs to the vultures, I presume. This must be that carry-on baggage I'm always hearing about. Yeah, it seems like it. We have some water oh, it's here. either water or a mirage. But well, here's to a nice refreshing glass of good hot sand. Nice oh, vulture. It? Let's not get too friendly, just in case it follows us home. Yeah, they don't see. They look like the freaking vultures from the Jungle Book. I'm not touching him. <laughs> well, they are fighting about the rotten arm, so let's do a little swap. <laughs> we didn't do a thing. Oh no. Try to eat that. Stuff that up, your jumper. How insulting! Give me the bite. <laughs> well, they are not happy about what I'm doing. But who cares? We're not going to stay here anymore anyway. We're going to Holy Wood. Take your little boat, Rincewind, and off we go. Now, the thing is that we have... Yeah, all the luggage, I mean. A rotten arm. Ooh, and with a ring on one finger. Well, at least he went in style. That's the thing, we need that... finger. Well, well ring, I should say. Let's see, uh, what's this? We're in Holywood. Oh! A lady dwarf. A dwarven woman. At least I hope it's a dwarven woman. A pantomime horse suit. Now, don't tell me, it's sure to be useful somewhere. I guess so. Let's have a look. Yeah? I'd better ask the wardrobe lady first. Alright, alright. Let's ask the nice dwarf lady. Let's see now. Greetings, Hello. my good man. Woman! I'm a woman! I might be a dwarf, but I'm still a woman. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I wasn't quite sure how to tell. And I'm not going to give you any hints. Anyway, what can I do for you? Well, um, um, but uh, dwarf working in the wardrobe department. Why not? It's a bit of a girly job, isn't it? I am a woman. I'm terribly sorry. I'll come in again. <laughs> there, that's better. <laughs> what kind of customer do you normally serve? <sighs> Actually, given the usual dress sense around here, a costume shop is a bit of a lost cause. Well, the horsey suit, then. Hmm. 
that horse suit? You can't afford it, love. But I tell you what. I'll swap you the suit for some new props for our new Jelly Baby and Night Clicky. Costume jewelry would be nice. Anything gaudy and showy? Perfect. Well, what you waiting for? Go off and quest for something. Are you absolutely sure you're a woman? Of course I'm sure. Some of us are secure in our sexual identity, you know. Well, dwarves in this world are usually just male, but um, there is a female revolution thanks to Sherry Littlebottom. I guess that's what's going on here. Let's just stop all this now. But with that, I'm actually finishing the episode here. So, thanks so much for watching, and if you liked what you saw, do leave a comment and hit that like button. And me, I'm going to sign off for now, and I'll see you guys later.